Mohammedan Islam is the only belief system on earth that forbids any questioning, investigating, comparing and contrasting of its holy book, the Quran. Will you provide details of this interesting phenomenon? I repeat once again that the greatest threat to the exposure of the falsehood of the Quran, our knowledge of the Quran, hadiths, the Hebrew Bible, the New Testament, and related scriptures and history. As we have repeatedly shown, and will continue to do so, in our series, that it is by divine justice that the very hadiths that explain the Quran to the followers of Muhammad are the ones which completely and utterly destroy its alleged divine origin, as we shall prove yet again in this chapter. We have a report from Umar ibn Khattab that he said, The Messenger of Allah stoned. Abu Bakr stoned and I have stoned. I am not prepared to add to the book of Allah the Quran, otherwise I would write it into the Mus'haf. For I fear that there will come some people who, not finding it, will not accept it. That is, not finding the stoning verse in the Quran. Umar summoned a group of the Muhajis and the Ansar and inscribed their testimony on the margin of the Mus'haf. The testimony of Umar that the Messenger of Allah stoned adulterers. Muhammad bin Abu Bakr, Shamsul Imam, Sarakhshi reports. Umar said from the pulpit, and part of what was revealed in the Quran read, the Shaykh and the Shaykha, when they fornicate, stone them outright. Some will repudiate this, and that men would say, Umar has added to the book of Allah, I will write it on the margin of the Mus'haf. If Umar knew about such a verse or surah, then why is it not in the Quran? Where did it used to be in the Quran? Obey asked Zir bin Hubais, How many verses do you recite in Surah 33 Al-Ahzab? Zir replied, 73 verses. Obey asked if that was all. I have seen it, he said, when it was the same length as Al-Baqarah of 286 verses. It contained the words, the Shaykh and the Shaykha, when they fornicate, stone them outright as an exemplary punishment from Allah. Allah is might and wise. Obey said, it used to equal the length of Surah Al-Baqarah and we used to recite it in Ahzab 33, the stoning verse. Ladies and gentlemen, this Surah must have been similar in length to that of Al-Baqarah 286 but ended being one of 73 only. How could anyone in his or her right mind accept such degradations in the Quran and still contend that it is divine? That its prototype is in heaven and that it has not been altered since it was revealed to Muhammad? Is the prototype also truncated, perverted and tampered with? What answers can the followers of Muhammad conjure up to explain away these catastrophic facts? Al-Ahzab 33 was identified as the surah originally containing the stoning verse and in addition to Obey and Abu Musa. Aisha reports that Ahzab used to be recited in the lifetime of the Prophet as having 200 verses but when Uthman wrote out the Mus'hafs, all they could find was its present length. Aisha explains how the wording came to be omitted from the Mus'haf. The stoning verse and another verse were revealed and recorded on a sheet, Sahifa, which was placed for safekeeping under her bedding. When the Prophet fell ill and the household were preoccupied with nursing him, a domestic animal got in from the yard and gobbled up the sheet. Ibn Abbas said, had Ibn Adam possessed two wadis of pelf, he would have desired a third. Only dust will fill the mouth of Ibn Adam, but Allah relents to him who repents. Umar asked, what is this? Ibn Abbas replied that Obey had instructed him to recite it. Umar took Ibn Abbas to confront Obey. Umar said, we don't say that. Obey insisted that the Prophet instructed him. Umar asked him, Shall I write it into the Mus'haf in that case? This too is not written in the Quran. Buraid claims to have heard the Prophet recite Ibn Adam at prayer. The ayah was in Surah Yusuf number 12. Obey said, yes, this was before the copying of the Uthman Mus'hafs on the basis of which the practice now rests. Zuhri reports, we have heard that many Quran passages were revealed but those who had memorized them fell in the battle of Yamama fighting. Those passages had not been written down and following the deaths of those who knew them were no longer known. Nor had Abu Bakr, 
nor Omar, nor Osman, as yet collected the text of the Quran. Those lost passages were not to be found with anyone after the deaths of those who had memorized them. This was one of the considerations which impelled the Muhammadans to pursue the Quran during the life of Abu Bakr, committing it to sheets for fear that they should perish in further theaters of war, men who bore much of the Quran, which they would take to the grave with them on their fall, and which, with their passing, would not be found with any other. There is no doubt that this verse was removed from the Quran because it alleged that those who died met with Allah, which is contrary to the Muhammadan doctrine that no human can meet face to face with Allah. The extreme Shia, the Rafidis, allege that the impious rulers of Muhammadan Islam had expunged from the Mus'haf some 500 verses, including those which most unambiguously marked out Ali as the appointed successor to the Prophet, the rebels against Uthman, justifying their revolt, enumerated amongst their grievances the resentment at his having expunged the Mus'hafs. All the above are only a small ripple in a tsunami of such abrogations, missing verses, missing surahs, added verses, and interloped surahs that can never be attributed to any omniscient divinity. Contrary to all the allegations and dogma of the followers of Muhammad, the Quran that we have today is not the same that was allegedly revealed to Muhammad, but has been repeatedly and deliberately tampered with to fulfill sectarian agendas. What is extremely relevant to point out is that the ahadith and traditions were written by Muhammad's contemporaries and companions in Arabic and are the ones that are making these assertions and not some outsiders or enemies to the faith of Muhammadan Islam. As I mentioned before, that it is indubitably by divine justice that the hadiths single-handedly, without the need for outside help or interference, destroy the alleged divine origin and veracity of the Qur'an.